Welcome to this video about advanced Figma components, tips and tricks by moonlearning.io. Moon Learning is an online learning platform for UX UI design of Figma. In this video, I'm going to show you some takeouts from my Figma Deep Dive Components class. Let's start and dive right into one of my favorites. Quick select matching layers and variants. It's easy to overlook this small yet very handy feature in Figma. When you select elements within a variant, a target symbol appears. Click on it to select all matching layers across the entire component set. This way, you can make the same changes to all variants in one go. This feature, along with component properties that really slim down our component set, is one of the main reasons that I say goodbye to base components. Use nudging for consistent spacing and padding in components. So you probably know about nudge. If you select an element and hold down shift and alt if you want to see the distances, you can move it with your arrow keys and it will jump in your set nudge amount. Per default, that is 10, but you can also alter the nudge amount to your liking. So I like having it set at eight, which corresponds to my eight point spacing system. The great thing about this is that you can also use nudge within auto layer components and nudge the spacing and padding following your eight point spacing conventions. And if you're still deciding on styles for your typography, then you can also use nudge. Simply select the text, hold shift and then move up and down and your type will increase in jumps of eight. To ensure line height stays consistent, I set it in percentage values, such as 150, which will be 1.5 in CSS. And did you know that you can use an overlay comparison to review updates from shared libraries? If a component was updated in an external shared library, once you select any instance of that component, you will see the blue update symbol next to it. So alternatively to updating all instances at once, you can choose review update from the instance menu. You then get a side by side comparison or you can choose overlay and really have a look at the detailed changes. In this case, just some padding and margins. Link your Figma components to a code base effortlessly. If you're looking for an easy way to link your Figma components to a code base without extensive documentation, you can simply add a link and description to the Figma component documentation. It's a little bit hidden next to your component name on the right hand side property panel. Adding this link will create a button in the inspect tab that directly links to the corresponding component section in, for example, GitHub. Use the HShape Specs plugin for faster documentation. So this plugin by Nathan Curtis is a real jam for documenting components. Select any instance and run the HShape Specs plugin. This will automatically generate a frame with a full documentation for you. You can move Figma components between files and keep their instance connections. So here we have a component and already set up instances in our design. Now to move the component, we first need to publish this design file. We can later remove it as a shared library, but you first need to publish it. Then select the component and hit command X. This will cut the component. Now open the new file that you want to use as your library, paste the component in here and you'll be prompted to publish. This will only work if you use cut, not if you use copy. Publish the new library, and you can now jump back to your original design file. You're gonna be prompted to review any changes of the new location, and now update. If you select any of the instances, you can see in the right hand side properties panel that they're now linking to the component in the new location. Did you know that you can swap libraries in Figma? This works for styles and shared component libraries and is a great way to set up a testing environment. 
Open your current library and click on the little arrow on the right. Now choose Swap Library and then from the drop down choose the library you'd like to swap with. It's important that components and styles are named identical. Click Swap and you're done. Always apply styles and auto layout settings to your main components, never your instance. This may seem obvious, but it's a common mistake I've noticed in many of my courses. Always apply styles and auto layout settings to the component, never as an override to the instance. The instance will automatically inherit all settings, ensuring your design system remains intact. Use real data in your instances. Now this is one of my favorite subjects lately because I firmly believe that we should design with actual data and there are some great plugins to help us. So I'm going to give you a short overview here. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, make sure that you check out my in-depth tutorials and working files on this. You'll find a link in the show notes. The first option to connect with real data is the Google Sheet plugin. All you need to do is to use the hash naming convention in your Figma layers and you can then connect with the plugin to your Google spreadsheet. You can pull in text, images and even swap components and variants. Option two will be using the kernel plugin. This is a bit of a different way because you're going to link up your components right in Figma to the information that you want to pull from either an API, a spreadsheet and many other sources. Use properties and preferred value when creating slot components. The so-called slot components function by holding a nested instance that acts as a placeholder or slot basically, where different sub elements can be slotted in through instance swapping. For this to work, your component must be set up as an auto layout component. Instead of selecting the slot in the instance and then swapping it, you can turn it into a component property, allowing you to choose favorites for swapping. This way we can highlight quickly to anyone using this component, which elements are intended to be used in the slot and avoid confusion. Easy organizing and naming with sections. I love sections. They were introduced in 2023 and might not seem at all that special at first glance. You might even think they're just the same as a frame with less options. Well, that's true and that's exactly why I like them. Just as with frames, I can place my components on sections and they add like an extra layer of organization. Think of them like little folders that you're placing your components in. This way you can quickly reorganize your component and also rename the structure without actually touching the component itself. Why I prefer sections to frames is that if I place the component on the section, I can still see the purple outlines clearly marking it as a component. Additionally, you can place frames into those sections and then put instances onto them, which I really like doing for showcasing single frames in presentation mode. For example, when demonstrating interactive behavior of my components. Component properties are amazing, but let's understand when it actually makes sense to use properties and when it's better to make changes to the main component. So here we have a very simplified example. Let's say we have a component called welcome and that renders hello and then displays the name. So in this case, the input for the name was Sarah and it would say hello, Sarah. Now this name could change and therefore it makes sense to set it up as a property because if we want to say hello to Tom, then the property would change to hello, Tom. This is usually taken from a database. However, if we want to change hello to hi, then this would not be a property change. This would be a change in the main component. So instead of putting properties on anything, be mindful about only using them when you want to communicate a possible change of content in the instance. Creating Figma components from existing pages via URLs. In a perfect world, everything is documented and aligned. But as we know, in reality, it's not always like that. 
So sometimes things are already built and you then need to go back and rebuild those components in Figma. A quick and easy way to do this is to use the HTML to design plugin. Simply enter the URL of the website and it will generate a Figma version which is pretty accurate for you. You can now grab the elements you're after and turn them into components. They might need a little bit of polishing here and there, but it's gonna save you a lot of time in any case. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. There is more coming. Also, make sure you visit moonlearning.io where you find the full course on Figma components and my working files.